Strādi. Welcome. Sen de etkin dokun tutuk işte. O nedir? Mane de facto ne tutuyun da çınar. Avrupa'nın komisyon bir ülkelik, hasa parasa artış bana. Jose Manuel Barroso, Mexican Tenderon da Portugal'ın Lisbon hatta tursun, Portugal'ın Ostorch, Avrupa'nın komisyon bir ülkelik. Hayırmın hayras hayırmın da doğru ani harmd Portugal'ın bir ülkesi der acele cüzdan. Lisbon'ın ilk sırgalı bir kolç merkezler toksun, Geneva'nın ilk sırgalı bir edinse, niğme şimdi kuchani master zirkte toksun. Eknara kormu hukte, Frans, İspan, Engel, German hilte. Welcome sir. Thank you. Let me ask a question a little bit about from your country because in Mongolia. Portugal is a country that produces the best football players. <laughs> and I know you also are coaching your boys. You were coaching your boys. Yes. Please tell us why, how come this tiny country brings this class of football players? Uh, there is a great passion for football in my country. And it is true that uh, we have great uh, players. Today the most famous is Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, but uh, we had others in the past from Eusebio mm -hmm. uh, and uh, others very important like Figo and many others. And we also have a very good school of coaches, the, those who train the teams so like uh, Mourinho yeah. and others. So I think this um, comes because it's the real passion, the national sport. And then uh, afterwards there was a kind of a school that was developed about this, uh, this sport and there is also very big competition between the most important teams uh, uh, in Portugal. You were saying after Mr. Draghi was coming and playing good performance, somebody was saying that like Ronaldo players, but at that time you said we need also a good team about Euro. Yes. And I think uh, Portugal is also producing good player and good team like you. You are being a president of the European Union for quite some time now. And, um, and you are the highest uh, level visit, paying highest level visit to my country. And uh, how is it going so far? Oh, it was a great success. I'm very proud and, uh, and I feel very privileged that I'm the first uh, president of the European Commission to visit uh, Mongolia. In fact, I think that visit should already have taken place before because even if uh, Mongolia is from a geographic point of view distant, uh, in fact, I feel very close to Mongolia. And I think in Mongolia, people also feel close to Europe because we have common values now. We are, we are here developing a democracy and an open economy, and this is very important. So the visit was a success from my point of view. We had very uh, open, friendly, constructive discussions with the president, also with the, the prime minister. Uh, I had other occasions also like the university, uh, the National Mongolian University, to launching a European Union film festival, also to show that our relations are not just about uh, political contacts are uh, between uh, uh, economic uh, uh, agents, but also about culture, people-to-people uh, -people contacts, students, researchers. So there is a great potential. This year we have signed the partnership and cooperation agreement, and next year will be the 25th anniversary of the European Union-Mongolian diplomatic relations. I invited the president to visit us in, in Brussels. I think now we have real made an impulse to this important partnership between uh, Mongolia and the European Union. Yeah, after this uh, agreement signed, uh, Mongolians are a lot expecting in the, uh, the uh, implementation of this agreement in the sense that Mongolians are very keen to accept certain standards from the European Union. And our president recently also particularly highlighted that that's very important to make better 
public governance in this country. So how we can do it um, that European standard, standards comes to the country better, faster, what do you think about that? Yes, I know the great priority the president uh, and the authorities give to this um, convergence uh, with European standards. And I really believe this is very important for several reasons. One is very simple. Uh, we are now in Europe the biggest market, integrated market yes. by value. So if Mongolia has uh, the same standards, for instance, in agricultural products, it means that those products can be exported without difficulties to, to Europe. And the same for the system of governance, regulatory convergence, uh, that is something very important. And in fact, we are already working on that matter. There is, uh, recently there was a new agreement on that specific issue. And now I can announce that uh, in the next seven years, we are going now to double our uh, cooperation uh, in terms of development. And a big part of it is in fact for what I called software cooperation. Yeah. It means not, uh, not uh, uh, let's say, hard constructions, but an investment in human capacities, in governance, uh, in know-how. Part of it can be done through the political and public entities. Part of it can be done by uh, SMEs, small, medium-sized yes. companies. Because the companies, when they come, there is also a transfer, not only of technology, but of know-how. Yes. And this is why it's so important also to bring more business to business contacts. I uh, today propose, and it was very well uh, warmly received by the Mongolian authorities to organize next year a mission for growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will be a mission at the political level, but also with mm, business people mm -hmm. that uh, not only the big companies, but also SMEs that want to interact with the partners of, I of think Mongolia. This is very much in line after we learning and accepting European standards we can bring this sort of high quality, yeah. which, was not an, uh, which, which was not used properly or uh, enough during the tariff, uh, discounted tariff time. Yes. And there was a still very big uh, imbalance between Europe and uh, Mongolia in terms of export and import. Yeah. So I think your visit will be a very important uh, step towards this, uh, uh, making less this imbalance. My but also in that matter, if I may, you know that European Commission proposed now to have the so-called SGP plus so, um, to Mongolia. So it's a preferential uh, access to our market compared to other countries also in the region. And uh, I hope that it will be accepted. Uh, and so very soon it can enter into force. So in fact, we are offering Mongolia better access uh, to our market. But of course, um, what is important in today's world, it's not only to produce good things, but also to be able to sell them. So that's why these contacts uh, between the entrepreneurs on both sides are, are so important. And uh, uh, cent uh, certainly the European Union is ready to support the reforms that are taking place here uh, in Mongolia. How can we more attract uh, European investment to Mongolia? First of all, <coughs> um, your legislation is very important. And uh, I think the new uh, investment um, legislation uh, goes very much in the right uh, direction. Uh, as you know, what business people, namely those that can bring important investment, want is to have rule of law, to have predictability, yes. not to have surprises. So apart from the legislation that can confirm this, it's important afterwards the practices the culture of entrepreneurship, the way that uh, contracts are respected. And, uh, and this is a, a process, uh, sometimes it also requires some learning on both sides, but it is necessary to improve the conditions uh, of confidence for, for investment. I know because just today I spoke with the highest authorities in the country that they are aware of this uh, um, priorities, and so I hope that this, the business climate 
will, will improve so that your economy can be diversified. Of course, you have very important and rich uh, natural resources, but I think it's important for a country like Mongolia not to be dependent just in one sector, uh, because sometimes there are also fluctuations in that market. So it is important to have industry, to have agriculture that uh, um, adds value, where Mongolia can export uh, more and uh, build things with more uh, value added. And for this, the know-how in Europe is very important, not only in technology, uh, where we have very good technology, but also in know-how, uh, in the, the way companies interact with the state, the way contracts are respected. So, and this is why I think the investment climate can uh, further improve also uh, in Mongolia. Welcome. You know, here in uh, Mongolia, we have very much respect for Europe, many countries, many culture there. It's a almost half billion population. And Mongolians a lot talk about being uh, like uh, Switzerland, Norway, neutral country. What do you think? How realistic is this for Mongolia? No, uh, you know, uh, these two countries that you have mentioned, uh, Switzerland and Norway, are not members of the European Union, but they are in fact uh, uh, members of the European Democratic Family of Nations and they are uh, very, very much linked also in terms of, of, of trade. It's, uh, it's amazing uh, in terms of investment. Uh, uh, a relatively small country like uh, Switzerland uh, is, I think, the fourth partner of the European Union because precisely they have adopted the same uh, standards in terms of open economy, uh, in terms of, uh, of the rules uh, that we have both in Europe and in Switzerland or in Norway. So, of course, Mongolia uh, is more distant now, but uh, if Mongolia um, also um, achieves progress in this regulatory convergence and in these standards, can become much more linked to, to the European economy. And I think this is good also for you in terms of uh, diversification. Yes, it's not only a business issue, but to be more close to uh, Europe and to understand more. However, in Europe, there's maybe not very big knowledge about Mongolia. Mm -hmm. What can we do to increase yes. knowledge of Mongolia as a nation, as a people, to Europe? Yes, I spoke about this today with the president, as always very friendly and very openly. I think uh, Mongolia can do more in terms of the marketing of the country. You have been very successful in the last years. It's amazing what the country has done politically to establish a rule of law. Uh, it was not uh, obvious at the beginning, let's be honest, it was not obvious. And it's amazing also the growth, impressive figures. But as you said, it's true that not enough people in Europe know about that. That's why I invited also the president to come next year, not only to commemorate the 25th anniversary of our diplomatic relations, but so that he can go there and send messages about this new Mongolia about these reforms that are going to take place, that are taking place here. Uh, but I think it's important also to do it in all the fields. Like I said, people to people context, more students of Mongolian Europe, mm -hmm. more scholars, more researchers, more uh, professors. And, uh, and then it will come natural. But um, if you ask my sincere opinion, I think a campaign of information not of propaganda, the bad sense of the word, but uh, uh, giving information about the new uh, Mongolia, I think it will be very interesting for, for you and also uh, for, for the European uh, Union so that we know better what's going on and we attract more people also to this uh, relationship, not only uh, in economic terms, but also, as I said, in cultural terms, where I know that there is a great creativity also uh, in this country. You know, since our uh, democratic revolution in the early 90s, we have come, we are doing this economic and political uh, transformation at the same time. But it seems today to me that we are at the, some, at the particular level of democracy where we really need the rule of law implemented in this, in terms of good governance, enforcement of law, contracts. In that regard, European 
uh, European Union uh, can be a good example and uh, what, what else we can do together. As I said, political contacts, political exchange, there have been high-level visits both ways. This is something we can do, not only bilateral, but uh, other parts of the world, because your uh, reforms here for democratization and also the modernization of the economy can be an example also for other countries, not only in Asia, but in other parts of the world. So the political dimension is important, the political support. But then economy, as I said, trade and investment, namely. Then cooperation, development cooperation. So to have some programs precisely to develop these uh, good governance systems and uh, some experts uh, on this field can also work together. Then people-to-people -people contacts, as I mentioned more researchers, more students. We have programs in Europe that uh, um, you can apply for. I suggested to the authorities uh, that, for instance, they have a kind of a focal point, a network of the Mongolian universities. Because for a student alone, it's more uh, a little bit difficult to know all the rules. But uh, there have been already Erasmus students in, uh, from Mongolia in Europe. But now we are extending that also to professors, to, to um, um, people working in the different uh, institutions of learning. So I think all this uh, is, uh, shows that there is a great potential in the relationship between Mongolia and the European Union. And now what is important is to implement this. And of course, a lot depends also on the reforms that you are going to do here in precisely, as you said, consolidating the rule of law system, consolidating a transparent uh, governance uh, system, uh, so that the modernization of your country can come uh, naturally. Uh, one thing that I am sure that you have learned during these years and that we have learned also in Europe is that not, that not everything can be done or should be done by the state. Of course the state has a very important role. That's what we are learning. Yes, <laughs> but it's not enough. Uh, more, I would say as important or even more important is the, the society, the, the, the culture of the society. That, that's why the level of education is important. It is the, the way, for instance, there is a private initiative that, go, that can invest, can create growth. As we usually say in Europe, it is not the state that creates growth. Growth is created by the work of people, citizens, and by the initiative of entrepreneurs. This is where the growth comes from. But of course, the state has a very important role of regulation, of making sure the, the, the rules are respected, that everybody is treated uh, equally, and this is very important. So my appeal to you, if I may, since I'm using uh, this very prestigious program of the Mongolian um, television uh, through a very prestigious journalist, is that this democratization, modernization, is a task not only for some elite, but for the citizens as all, well, as all, well. yes. and uh, and there Europe can can help. Of course, we will of course <coughs> work according also to your priorities because we very much respect the the, the, the this country. That's a very strong identity. Uh, it's amazing when you see the history of this country. How for so many centuries you were able not only to to build the biggest uh, in terms of uh, territory, the biggest. Uh, um, uh, empire in the world, but also how you could sometimes in very difficult circumstances keep your identity and today your national sovereignty. But uh, we can be a partner to, to help this, but at the end it depends on you. <laughs> it depends on what the Mongolian uh, citizens, namely the young people, are able to do to consolidate a system of freedom and uh, open society, but open society with respect of rule of law and of course an open economy as well. How do you see uh, Mongolia-Europe relations uh, beyond 2020, like 10 years from now? We are going to commemorate next year the 25th anniversary of diplomatic relations. I think we should think about the next 25 <laughs> years because these uh, uh, relations benefit if there is a strategic um, um, goal. And I think precisely if we do this, I'm saying, if we believe that apart from the good uh, political cooperation that we have uh, between the authorities and the European Union, I think um, we have to go 
beyond that through the society, through the economy, to create more uh, interconnections, uh, more linkages, and so that uh, it can be more fluid, more intense in the different sectors. I'm very confident about the future of Mongolia-European Union relations. My last question is uh, uh, about the Euro. And you were one of the uh, Ronaldo of uh, keeping Euro in that way, and uh, we hope enough for the great future of Euro and the European Union. Uh, after your presidency, next 10 years, how do you see the way how Euro will go? No, the Euro is and was always a very stable, strong and credible currency. If you think the euro was created not many years ago, and immediately it became one of the two most important currencies in the world. It's the second uh, currency of reserve in the world. What happened was not really a crisis of the euro as such. What happened was, because of the financial crisis, a crisis in some of our countries, because they had accumulated too big debt, the state accumulated the big debt, and also there were some practices in the financial sector also uh, being contaminated by practices coming from other parts of the world that uh, created instability. But the euro as such remained always uh, a strong and credible uh, currency. Um, what we really had was not a, a crisis created by the euro, because as you know, many countries that do not have the euro also had a financial crisis, the, our American uh, friends, but also uh, United Kingdom is a member of the European Union, but not uh, a member of the euro area, or another small country uh, of Europe. Issues not euro. Uh, not in euro, but another small country of Europe that is not a member of the European Union, Iceland, that was very much affected. So it shows that the euro was not the cause of the problem. The, the Europe is not the problem in, the, in, in our economy. Europe is part of the solution. Um, but of course, it was difficult to manage because you have uh, now 17 countries that share the currency, but with different economies. And so we had to create many new instruments. And as we've said all the time during the most difficult moments of the crisis, we said to our partners, international partners, be sure we are going to solve the situation. And I think now we can say that the, these doubts about the euro are gone. The markets now are fully confident. Of course, we have a low growth in Europe now, but we, growth is coming. And uh, because some adjustments were necessary. Uh, so I'm confident also about the European Union. The reality is that the European Union uh, it's around 70% um, of the world population, but it's more than 20% of the global output. So, and because of the technology, because of the uh, mature economies, uh, because of the general level of education and well-being, uh, the societies of Europe can look to the, fu to the future. And so we are a reliable partner for all our friends and of course, including for Mongolia. Thank you very much for your wonderful interview. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of your program. Oh, thank and, uh, you. Have a, a great day. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.